Hello, Lake County, Florida, and welcome to Around the House, sponsored by Romac Lumber and Supply. I'm your host, Don Magruder, and you're listening to my 790 AM WLBE in beautiful Leesburg, Florida. I'd also like to welcome our viewers who are watching on Lake Sumter Television, that's LSTV, and Appleseed Marketing on Bright House 199, Comcast 13, and Florida Cable 4. Romac Lumber is leading provider of build materials in Central Florida, and since 1945, local residents have trusted Romac Lumber for all of their construction needs. With locations in Leesburg, Mount Dora, the Villages, and Ocala, Romac Lumber has the area covered. Today, we will be discussing the 2015 Lake Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo, which is being held Saturday, Saturday, March the 7th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Leesburg National Guard Armory at 400 West Meadow Street in historic downtown Leesburg. The expo is absolutely free to attend, and there will be over 50 booths of local contractors, suppliers, subcontractors, and national manufacturers in the home construction industry. If you're planning a new home, remodel, addition, or just want some good general home improvement information, then you won't intend the Expo. The Expo is being sponsored by Romac Lumber, The Daily Commercial, Focus Magazine, Red Apple Marketing, and the City of Leesburg. In addition, we have some great happenings at the Expo. First, the Leesburg High School Swing Band will be there performing, plus the band parents will be serving up some great food, so please come out and support those folks. Next, you can come by and register $1,000 in cash that will be given away from for someone for just attending that day. WLBE is going to be out there with a live remote. And, of course, we're going to have the Lap Against Hunger, the second annual, which benefits the Lake Cares Food Bank. And we're going to be talking a lot about that in the second half of the program. We are super excited to have a special celebrity guest attending the expo who will be meeting fans and signing autographs and just happens to be our guest today. He's Shane Matthews. He's one of the great Florida quarterbacks. In Florida Gator lore, Shane Matthews was was probably the first great quarterback in the Spurrier area, uh, even though he wasn't recruited by Spurrier. Shane is a member of the University of Florida Athletic Hall of Fame and he uh, was a three-time All-SEC quarterback. Plus, he quarterbacked the Gators to their first official SEC championship. After college, Shane spent 14 years in the the NFL with the Chicago Bears, uh, Washington Redskins, Carolina Panthers, Buffalo Bills, Cincinnati Bengals, and Miami Dolphins. Shane Matthews is truly one of the Gators' great quarterbacks. With that, I'd like to introduce Shane Matthews. Thank you for joining us today. And, Shane, we look forward to having you at the Expo this year. Well, Don, I'm, I'm excited to be here and uh, look forward to that Saturday, uh, seeing a lot of folks out there. Well, Shane, not many people know this, but you're not from the state of Florida, but rather Mississippi. Now, I happen to know that fact because I'm from Mississippi, and I'm probably one of the few people that have seen you play high school football before. Uh, in fact, you're from an area where I grew up. It's Pascagoula, Mississippi, and you were an all-state high school quarterback who won a state championship. Talk a minute about your years of playing high school football in Mississippi. And um, then how did you end up here in Florida? Well, you know, playing high school football in Mississippi, there's a lot of great athletes. You know, for a long time, uh, per capita, the state of Mississippi put more players in the National Football League than any other state. Mm -hmm. So there's tremendous athletes. Uh, Friday nights, as you know, uh, it's similar to, to Florida high school football, but it's like that movie Friday Night Lights where the town shuts down and everybody's at the game. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, we like you said, we had a great high school team my senior year winning the state championship there. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I was recruited by a lot of schools in the south. I wasn't very big, still not very big today, but I probably wouldn't be recruited these days, Don. I was only about 6'2", 165 pounds when I signed wow. my scholarship at Florida. But I, I took my visit to Florida, Florida State, and LSU. Uh, my dad and mom both attended Ole Miss. My dad was a football player at Ole Miss, but for whatever reason, I didn't think it was the right fit for me. And basically, I wanted to play in the SEC, and it came down between uh, Florida and LSU. Even though LSU was much closer to home, and my best friend, who was my center, had signed with LSU, they thought I was going to go there. But 
I chose Florida. I thought it was a great, great school academically, uh, but it had everything I, I wanted. That you know, they offered everything I wanted. And Shane, I, I think we probably need to paint the picture a little uh, clearer. Back then, Florida wasn't Florida that it is today. Florida was considered a mid to mid mid SEC team at best. Would that be a fair assumption? Yeah, it would. You know, they they hadn't won anything actually. Uh, you know. LSU, the Alabamas of the world. You know, I wanted to go play at Alabama just because of the history and, and all that stuff. But they were one of the only schools in the southeast that didn't recruit me. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Florida did not come on the scene of winning championships and the program that people nowadays think about the program until 1990 when Steve Spurrier was introduced as the head coach. When he got introduced as the head coach at the University of Florida, what was your first thoughts? Well, it's funny. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, you, you see all the facilities and, and all this stuff that you see on the SEC network and you see during games nowadays. It wasn't like that back in, you know, 88, 89 and before he got there. I honestly, when he was hired as the head coach, had never heard of the guy. Oh, really? There were, there were no Heisman Trophy sitting around in the locker rooms like you see on Showcase now. It just – those times, recruiting was different back then. Uh, so, I didn't really know who he was. So, uh I looked into it with my dad, found out, you know, obviously he was a Heisman Trophy winner, a great player, and was a tremendous coach at Duke, and saw what he did and, and thought it was a great fit for me, and I'm very fortunate that things worked out. Now, you mentioned your dad was a high school coach. He was a high school coach at Pasco High School. Uh, looking back, how influential was uh, your years in high school ball playing for Coach Matthews? Well, it was tough. Uh, you know, people look at Steve Spurrier. He's calmed down a lot now since he's been at South Carolina. But if you go back to his, his coaching days at Florida when he was screaming and throwing his visor and all that stuff, people want to know how did that affect you. It didn't bother me one bit because when you play for your dad, that's much tougher. Uh, so it prepared me for him. Uh, you know, I think being a, a coach's son, growing up around it, even when I was a youngster, going out to the practices, it helped me understand the game mentally. And, yeah, I was blessed with a little bit of ability, but I think the mental part of the game allowed me to play under Spurrier and be able to play 14 years in the league. You're listening to Around the House, sponsored by Romac Lumber. We're having a great discussion today with Shane Matthews, former Gator great football quarterback, who's going to be at the March 7th Lake Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo. And we're talking about Shane's pass in uh, – uh, Shane, so Flo uh, Steve Spurrier becomes head coach at Florida. And uh, how did you become the number one guy? How did you, you know, uh, I think you mentioned off there, and maybe you won't tell people, you started out as a redshirt, right? Well, I was redshirt in my first year, and then I was a redshirt freshman at Galen Hall. He was fired, and then that's when Spurrier came in and uh, had not had never taken a snap in a collegiate game. And when he got here, I was pretty much buried fifth on the depth chart. Uh, but Spurrier in his first uh, his first meeting with the team before spring practice started, he said, look, I don't care who you are, what you've done, everybody's going to be given an equal opportunity to show what they can do. Many coaches say that, and it's a lot of hogwash, but mm -hmm. it was true. And so I kind of worked my way up in the spring, threw three touchdowns in the spring game, which we were having – we had it at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville because they were tearing up the turf at Florida Field. Threw three touchdown passes, and then he named me the starter – that uh, before the uh, fall season and played three years for him. How did you do your first year? We went 9-2. and two. We won the SEC. We were 7-0, and oh, but we weren't claimed champions due to some violations five or six years uh, before that. But uh, had a very good year. Um, it was a lot of fun playing for him. And it just kind of, you know, those early Spurrier teams kind of laid the foundation for Florida football. Looking back, how tough was Steve Spurrier as a uh, quarterback? Or as a, you know, I know he focused mainly on quarterbacks, but as a quarterback coach. He's very tough. He's demanding. Uh, he wants perfection. But he also understands that p quarterback is the hardest position in all of sports to play. He knew what you can and cannot do, but it was his job to push you to be the best. And if you understood that, you could handle his, his coaching. It was all constructive criticism. And – as a player, you know when you make mistakes. You don't need a coach to get on you. And so I think it took different kind of players to play for him. But like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for him. A lot of people consider Spurrier, uh, Coach Spurrier, as the uh, uh, probably the godfather of the new college system today. 
uh, looking comparing to systems today versus what you guys ran back in 90, 91, 92, 93. How, what's the similarities, and where do you think it's better or worse? Well, I think he changed the uh, the entire conference. You know, before he got into the SEC, you know, there was the Bo Jacksons, the Herschel Walkers. It was more ground and pound. And we would go four and five wides and throw it all over the ballpark. So he, ch- he changed it, making it a little bit more exciting, I think, for fans to watch, and we scored a lot of points. Uh, you look at college football today, it's still kind of the same way. It's spread out throwing the football, but your quarterback is doing a lot of running. He didn't ask his quarterbacks to do that, maybe because none of us were capable of running. Mm -hmm. Uh, But nowadays, most people are doing what he did, what he started in the SEC back in 1990, but just implementing the quarterback running the football a little bit more. Starting to see a lot of quarterbacks get dinged up, hurt, not be able to play the full year. Do you think – this trend of a running quarterback and a arm quarterback is going to continue or will the necessity because of injuries sort of revert back to the old Florida style of football? Well, if you look at two different ways, I think you're going to continue seeing running quarterbacks, dual threat quarterbacks in college football. I don't believe dual threat guys can work in the NFL. I mean, it's it's proven. I mean, Robert Griffin the third, who wins the Heisman Trophy, I don't know if he'll pan out and be a good pro ever. You have to be able to throw the football in the National Football League. But to answer your question about college football, I think, you you know, if you can do both, that puts a lot of pressure on a defense. Okay, 1991, Florida wins its first official SEC championship. And a lot of people, I know the prior year you had a great year, but it's it's almost a stamp like Florida football's on uh, really on the way out or way up. Uh, At the time, did you really know how big a deal that was? I don't think so. I think when you look back now, being an old guy, to to realize that was the first official title in 1991. And then, you know, Coach Spurrier in his 12 years there, he won seven SEC titles and one national championship. So, you know, I would have loved to have played for a national title, but we didn't have the teams to do it. But those early three teams that I played on those three years, we laid the foundation. And then in 96, they won a national title with Warfel at quarterback. But – um. You know, it's kind of cool to be the quarterback of the first ever SEC championship team. Now, you had the privilege, I think, of playing in the first SEC championship game. And that's been featured on the SEC network. Uh, I happened to meet Coach Stallings, very nice man. But uh, th- that was a big game, and it, w- it was a big gamble by the SEC. Uh, back then, the game was played in Legion Field, correct? Correct. Had the game not been an Alabama home game. And if anybody's ever been to Legion Field, it's an Alabama home game. Had it been in Atlanta or had it been at a neutral site, do you think y'all might have fared differently? Well, Don, to be honest with you, we probably had no business being in that game. That was my senior year. Uh, we were 8-3 and three going into that game. Uh, somehow won the East. Like you said, it was the first year they split the East and the West. And Roy Kramer, who was the commissioner at the time, was catching a lot of flack from coaches and, and media people around the country that here you are, you're, you're already playing in the toughest conference in all of football, and you're adding another game to that, that can do, basically ruin your chances of winning a national title. You know, we're 8-3, and three, Alabama was 11-0 and 0 at the time, and that was the year that we lost at Mississippi State. We, were, we started the year at 1-2 and two and somehow mm-hmm. found a way to get in that championship game, and People say that is the play that changed college football. The reason is because if Florida wins that game, there probably is no more championship games. There probably is no BCS because we would have ruined Alabama's chances. So we we played very hard in that game. We were down 21-7. to We battled back to make it 21-all with under three minutes to play, and then I threw the interception for a touchdown. And what's funny about that is all the interceptions that I've thrown, which I threw a bunch in the pros and in college, that's the only one that was ever run back for a touchdown. Oh, really? Either I always made the tackle or one of my teammates did, but we didn't make the tackle. So, answer your question, would the venue been better somewhere else? Possibly. It was very cold that night, but Alabama was by far the better team. And Antonio Langham made a great play, uh, uh, but that is considered the play in, in, in the inaugural SEC championship game. And for better or worse, you're, you're, you're part of the legend now. Yeah, I am, man. You know, I – I'm always welcome back in the state of Alabama. You know, they they, uh, they roll out the red carpet if I want to come. Thinking about your college career, and you played a lot of big games, and, you know, 
Florida, when you were there, it cranked up to a national national level. What's the game that stands out as your best game or the one that you look back, the first game you think about in college? Well, it's tough playing three years under Spurrier. We played in, like you said, a lot of big games. But there's two that I think kind of stand out, and not so much from uh, statistically. It's just the first game of his career, my game, ever start. It was against Oklahoma State. He was catching a lot of flack for naming a starter who had never taken a snap. And we go out and we win 50-7. to seven. I throw three touchdowns. Then the very next week – is the game that he says to change uh, Florida's program because Florida always had great defenses and but could never win. The reason they couldn't win a championship was because they couldn't win an SEC road game. Well, he emphasized in, you know, all off season in his first year was we get, if we want to win, we've got to win road games. Well, nothing better than go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama the second week of the season with all the history of Alabama football, and we found a way to win that game on the road. And that kind of kick-started. He'll, he'll tell you that that's the most important win in Florida football history. Yeah, you won some national titles, but that's the one that got it going. So there was a lot of them, but those two kind of stand out the most to me. And, you know, Shane, not many quarterbacks can say they beat Alabama at Alabama. That's true. Uh, you know, I was I was actually 2-1 and one against Alabama. Uh, the next year we, we destroyed them at home, but then my senior year we lost to them in that title game. You're listening to Around the House, and today our special guest is Florida Greater Gate Shane Matthews. And we're uh, discussing his uh, involvement in the 2015 Lake Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo on Saturday, March the 7th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, Shane will be at the expo from 10 to 1, signing autographs, making pictures, and talking about Florida football. So you want to be sure to join us for the Lake Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo, which is going to be at the Leesburg National Guard Armory in uh, Leesburg on March the 7th. So Shane, you you finish your SEC career on a interception, basically with Anton, Antonio Langham, and then you uh, sign, you go into pro football. Uh, you're signed by the Chicago Bears, and you start a 14 year career in uh, uh, the NFL. Can you uh, can you tell our listeners? I've heard Peyton Manning talk about this. Can you tell our listeners the difference in the speed of the game between and the game itself between NFL and college? Well, it's 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 like night and day. I mean, you know, you come from the SEC, you feel like you're pretty prepared, which you are, but the speed of the game in the NFL, it's scary. And I don't think people realize that watching it on TV or sitting in the stands. If you can get down to field level and see how violent and how fast the game is played, it'll blow your mind. But uh, it's, uh, it's the best players in the world. And, you know, that's why when you look at quarterbacks in the NFL, they have the hardest job in all the sports, in my opinion to make those quick decisions, have to make accurate throws with 300-pounders coming and breathing down your neck. So uh, I was lucky to play as long as I did. Like I said, I only played, I think, in 35 games in 14 years. I was mostly a backup, but uh, I learned a lot. Thinking about your NFL uh, playing days, uh, what was your best experience in pro football? Well, I – like I said, 35 games. I was actually the NFL Player of the Week twice, once with the Bears and once with the uh, Redskins. Had a couple of pretty good games. But I think the biggest thing is just what I took out of the NFL. Is, like I said, I learned a lot from an X's and O's standpoint from a lot of different coaches. But it was just a, it was a great experience, just a, a way of life and just, you know, the different type of people. I mean, some teams you'd have, you know, 20-year-olds on, and then you also have some 40-year-old guys playing. So the mixture was pretty cool. But it's just uh, – it, it's a great feeling. I mean, you know, people say once you retire, you'll never get that adrenaline rush of running out of that tunnel, mm-hmm. out of the swamp or either on uh, Sunday afternoons. And it's true. It's hard to find it. Now, you're – of course, you retired after 14 years. You played a lot of college and pro football. Uh, what are you doing now? Well, I coach high school football. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a volunteer coach. Uh, that way I don't have to deal with the mamas and daddies too much. But uh, I do that and also do a quarterback camp called Camp QB with Kerwin Bell, who's the head coach at Jacksonville University. We've been doing that for about 15 years. Uh, We have kids from all over the country that come to that camp. We only take 30 quarterbacks to keep it hands-on. We don't want a bunch of dudes running around. We want to be able to coach them up. Uh, So that's it. I basically uh, do a little sports talk radio as well. And coach high school football. Yeah, I, I've heard you on sports talk. You got, in fact, you sort of made a little headlines when you called out Urban Meyer uh, a few years ago. Well, what happened was, is you know, 
in the preseason, you know, everybody wants you to come out and, okay, what's the Gators record going to be? And we're talking in August. So I looked at the schedule, and that was the year they lost to Ole Miss. But I, had, I knew Ole Miss had a very good quarterback. They had Mike Wallace at receiver and a bunch of right. other guys. I mean, they had some skill guys. And Houston Nutt was the head coach at the time, and he was always known to go into hostile environments and upset somebody. Right. So, And Florida had to play Tennessee the previous week. So I looked at the schedule, and I said, it just doesn't look right. I feel like Ole Miss could come in there and win that game. But things will still work out for Florida, and if, if they take care of their business, they can play for the SEC title. Well, he didn't like that. He didn't think I should pick against us, but – Nobody's going to listen to the radio show if you pick us to win every game, right, Don? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I picked us to go 11-1, and one, lose to Ole Miss, but have a chance to win the SEC. They lost to Ole Miss. They won the SEC, and they won the national title that year. That's amazing. Now, we're uh, – it's uh, in March, or we're, well, we're actually in January. Uh, it's a few months to the new Florida Gators season. They've hired a new coach, uh, Coach McElwain, and he's getting his staff together. Uh, what do you think about Florida's prospects for 2015? How, do, how does Shane Matthews view, if you had to predict, where, where's Florida going to be this year? Well, I think Florida's got a chance to win the, the SEC East. There's no dominant team over there. Nobody really has a quarterback either when you look at the SEC, and especially the SEC East. So defensively, we have a lot of great players. Will Muschamp and his staff did a tremendous job on that side of the ball. Coach McElwain, he's got to go find a quarterback that he can count on and be consistent. If he mm -hmm. does that and finds a few playmakers on offense, they got a chance to win the East. Um, I really believe that. What do you feel about Driscoll leaving the program? I know he, I, I, a lot of people felt like he needed to go because it, it is obviously he had lost confidence. Everybody had lost confidence in him. Well, sometimes a chain of scenery is good. Uh, Jeff Driscoll is as good a stand-up kid as you, as you want to meet. I mean, he handled it the whole situation very, very well. Things just didn't work out for him. He was the number one player in the country coming out. Things didn't work out. Uh, I think he'll do very well at Louisiana Tech. Okay. So, think Florida can win the East next year? I do. I uh, Like I said, uh, nobody has an established quarterback uh, coming out of the East. Um, I just think uh, – we got to score points. You got to find a way. Defensively, they're going to be strong. If they can find a quarterback that can make good, strong decisions, throw the ball accurately, they have a chance. At this point, how does Florida's recruiting look? Well, I think it's not real good at this moment, but you still got about two and a half weeks to go. And with Coach McElwain assembling his staff finally and them out on the recruiting trail, I think they'll persuade some of these kids that they can come play right and out right away and make a difference. Uh, in your opinion, what happened to Coach Muschamp? You know, everyone that knows him and, and, and has heard him, he seems like an outstanding coach. He's highly recommended. Why Why didn't he have success in Florida? Well, I think the biggest thing is is uh, the quarterback position and the offensive skill players. Uh, you know, when you think of Florida football, you think of great quarterbacks uh, the last 20-something years and scoring a lot of points. And he did a tremendous job. The guy can coach up some defense. Uh, he'll, he'll be another great head coach one day. Well, Shane Matthews, we want to thank you for being our guest today. Very insightful. <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you, someone from Mississippi also. But we're also looking forward to you joining us March 7th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the New Home Building and Remodeling Expo. And please make your plans to come meet Shane. He's a great guy to talk to, and I think you'll have a good time. Thank you for being with us. Welcome back to Around the House, sponsored by Romac Lumber. I'm your host, Don Magruder, and you're listening to my 790 AM WLBE in beautiful Leesburg, Florida. And if you're seeing this today, then you're obviously watching Lake Sumter Television, that's LSTV, and Red Apple Marketing on Bright House 199, Comcast 13, or Florida Cable Number 4. Today, uh, we're talking about the new home building and remodeling expo, which is going to be held Saturday, March the 7th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. in uh, the Le at the Leesburg National Guard Armory in historic downtown Leesburg. And we've just talked to Shane Matthews, one of the great Florida quarterbacks, but now we're going to talk about something just as important, very important. Uh, we're going to talk about the Lake Cares Lap Against Hunger, which is going to be held in conjunction with the Expo. And uh, 
the Lake Cares Expo uh, Lap Against Hunger is going to be a big deal because hopefully we can raise a lot of money and feed a lot of folks. Uh, my guest today is Irene O'Malley. She's the executive director of Lake Cares and they're located in Mount Dora. And they're a very popular group these days because there's been some food pantries to close lately. And Irene, welcome. We're glad to have you here today. Well, thank you so much, Don. I'm super excited to be here today as well and to speak about my most favorite event of the year, A Lap Against Hunger. Well, and this year we've changed up the format a little bit. And why don't you just take a minute and talk to tell our viewers and listeners about The Lap Against Hunger and what's going to happen. Okay. Well, what we're trying to do is raise 50,000 pounds of food for Lake Cares Food Pantry. And um, we are charging $5 for the lap. That $5 is going to buy 27 pounds of food um, because we have special resources for that. And um, so so for that $5, you get to a lap, uh, do a lap against hunger. You'll be able to uh, visit other vendors. We're going to have a bounce house there, a popcorn, 4-H club. It's just going to be a lot of fun that day. It's a great event, and you get to walk around that beautiful fountain lake. And And let's be clear on something. A lot of people are saying, well, it's 27 pounds of food. How does five dollars buy twenty seven pounds of food and and I understand y'all buy it through second harvest and and you 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 explain it. you get special breaks Why don't, how how do you qualify that certainly um, we are a member of Second Harvest Food Bank in Orlando Florida food banks. Uh, feed food pantries and food pantries feed people so we're able to go there and um, we purchase the food that they get special deals on um, it's usually the boxes will say a box of breakfast items or a box of soup items it's not that we're buying a case of progresso or a case okay. of so it's assorted items and when it's assorted items like that we can purchase it for 18 cents a pound which is great well, you know, Irene, uh, uh, I saw you Friday, and uh, I'm, Romac Lumbers, of course, is a sponsor of the event. There's other sponsors, but we're the primary sponsor. But uh, I made a uh, personal commitment to 1,000 pounds of food. It's roughly a $200 donation. And I like to encourage anyone in the construction industry that has the means, because it is such a, a, a big deal these days. There's a lot of people who need food to to donate a thousand pounds of food or make a two hundred dollar donation to the lap against hunger but if you can't do that if you can come out and just make one lap around the park for five dollars uh, that would help immensely, wouldn't it? It certainly would. It certainly would. And like I said, we are trying to raise 50,000 pounds of food. So so that would be awesome. Even the $5 is 27 pounds. Um, you know, that, that's quite a bit of food, actually, that, that uh, we're able to purchase. We're also, for that 18 cents a pound, we're able to purchase meat from Second Harvest. And you all know how expensive meat is in the supermarkets right now. Oh, yeah. But can you imagine buying some steaks or some ground beef or something like that for just 18 cents a pound and then being able to give that to our clients. Irene, let's talk a minute about Lake Cares and the mission. Uh, a lot of folks may not be familiar with Lake Cares. Tell us, tell them about what you guys do and how you operate because y'all are literally performing miracles in Mount Dora. That's good corn, miracles in Mount Dora. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I like that one. I'm going to remember that. Okay, Don? Okay. Um, well, Lake Cares actually opened up in April of 2009, and when we did, we, our intent was to feed about 15 to 25 families a week. That was when the um, the unemployment rate was super high and a lot of foreclosures and things like that. So we were really seeing a lot of the younger families. We didn't expect to continue to go on. You know, everybody thought that things would get better. And they have gotten somewhat better for the younger families, but what we're finding now is the seniors and the disabled that are just having such major challenges, their their income's not going to go up. Uh, the cost of living adjustment was only 1.5% for right. this year. And so that's not really going to help them out. So now we're feeding about 140 families a week, and over 65% of them are seniors and disabled. 
But our mission statement is to feed the body, educate the mind, and lift the spirit of all individuals. So we also have classes. We have stop smoking classes because, mm -hmm. you know, if we can get them to stop smoking, it's a great thing. Um, computer classes. We work with Lake Tech on GED classes. And then, of course, we, we have basic budgeting classes as well, too. So all of that helps to lift the spirit. And you know, Irene, uh, and I'm, this is not political commentary, but there's a disconnect between the published unemployment rates and what's really happening on the ground. You know, I understand we're at the lowest employment participation rates in, in five decades now, practically, and uh, there's a lot of people who are not able to find work who have given up and and I think you probably see that clearer than anybody, don't you? Absolutely. And and the people that are finding jobs are finding very low-paying jobs mm -hmm. as well, too. So it's really hard for them to make that dollar stretch. So there's plenty of times that we will have uh, you know clients that come in that are still driving somewhat of a nicer car. They still have certain certain items that they were able to buy before, uh, they're not going to give them up because if you give up your car and you have to trade that in, what are you going to end up with? So you're going to drive that car around. But they can't afford anything else anymore. And so that's why they come to us. And to make the problem worse, you're having food pantries that are failing because they don't have the support any longer. Recently had a food pantry here in Lake County Clothes and that fed a lot of folks, and uh, it seems, I mean, you're hearing every day that church pantries are extremely low. Uh, it just seems to be that, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, and you tell me if I'm wrong, uh, the uh, the economy is still sitting down pretty hard on a lot of a lot of lower to poor folks. Absolutely, and you know when when we look at Lake County. There aren't too many companies out there the size of Romac that are going out and hiring people. You know, it's it's just, it's a real struggle. And then when you are a senior and and you're facing those higher food price items um, or your you know, medication, all the rest of it, I mean, the insurance, the, there's so many things that are still going on out there that people are just still struggling. And yes, then we end up with food pantries that close down. The one that closed down fed a lot of people in Lake County. But uh, Lake Cares is going to step up to the plate on that one, Don. And we are taking over the food distribution in Mount Dora and the Mount Dora location. So we'll be ha having um, a mobile food pantry that's going to feed an additional 160 families every month. Well, that's that's just wonderful. Now, let's, uh, first off, where are you located in Mount Dora? We, we haven't said that yet. <laughs> no, we haven't. We're at uh, the corner of Morningside and Old 441. The actual address is 2001. U.S. Highway, um, old 441. And one of the things that I want to really stress and make sure everybody understands, we feed people from all of Lake County. Now, now to give everybody a good indication of where you guys are located, I have to do restaurants. They're located on old 441 where the Dairy Queen is, a little past the Dairy Queen on the opposite side of the road. <laughs> yes. You know, most, most people can find the restaurant, but... Uh, it's amazing what you guys are doing out of the facility you're doing it with. Um, and let's talk about the Lap Against Hunger. The Lap Against Hunger is going to be held in conjunction with the new home building and remodeling expo on Saturday, March 7th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful time. It's going to happen rain or shine. That's right. You know what I mean? It, it, and... Uh, it's not just about making a lap and giving five dollars away. It's much, much more than that. Talk about what's the events that's going to be happening at the Lap Against Hunger. Well, yes, we're going to have sponsors there. We're going to have businesses that are sponsored there. But we're also going to have Star Wars characters that are going to be walking around. And uh, the Star Wars characters are actually one of only four organizations in the, all of the United States that's allowed to wear those Star Wars costumes. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. The 4-H Club is going to be there um, w with their miniature horses, and, and they're going to do a shearing. And, uh, and as I said, a bounce house is going to be there and popcorn and vendors and uh, just uh, and of course the Leesburg High School band is going to be there as well too and you're going to have raffles and yes and I guess if someone were interested in participating as a sponsor 
sponsorship uh, opportunities still exist. And uh, what I understand, you're going to allow people to put tents around the walking track. It's a, it's what a half mile walking. It's a quarter track. mile. Quarter mile walking track. So if you can make one quarter mile, it's concrete. It's real nice. It's a beautiful park. Uh, sponsors can set up tents and people come by, the show, uh, hand out pamphlets or whatever, maybe uh, give a little trinkets out. But sponsorship of, uh, are available, aren't they? Yes, they certainly are. And all that they need to do, Don, is give a call at uh, 352-383-0100. That's Lake Cares. Ask for me, Irene, or Kathleen, and we will be able to talk to you about sponsorships that are available. Now, one thing about the uh, lap against hunger that you're really going to try to do is uh, we won't, you want everybody that you can come out there and make a lap and donate five dollars for twenty-seven pounds worth of food, but you really would like to see organizations, churches, and schools, and employment groups, and you know, say, hey, let's get twenty people out there. Let's let's donate several thousand pounds. You know, you've set a, a level of fifty thousand pounds of food. We need we need to break that level, don't we? I, I would love to. Hey, listen, I'd love to make it seventy five thousand pounds of food. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a great team building event as well too for businesses. And if if you have a uh, a group of eight or more, um, we have some other options as as far as that goes as well too, as far as pricing. Because if you want a Lake Cares T shirt. Um, it's twenty dollars, and that's your five dollars, and fifteen dollars goes towards the T-shirt. If you're a group of eight or more, then that price drops down to fifteen dollars. So you get your T-shirt for that as well too, and uh, and this is also a great event for those kids that need to do some community service hours as well too for their bright futures. Okay. Yeah. So schools can get involved in this and and get entire classrooms out there. Well, you know, this show goes out to the villages, and there's a lot of clubs in the villages that that want to help. And uh, they have a lot of great people at villages and other communities throughout the, uh, the area that can help. Uh, if a group or civic group want to participate and bring several hundred people out to make a lap, uh, what phone number could they call, Irene? Sure. 352-383-0100. Ask for Irene or Kathleen. If we are closed, because we do close at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, then they just need to leave a message. They're also going to be able to very shortly go online at lakecares.org. Information will be posted on there. Or if they want to, they can go to our Facebook page, and we'll have the information there too. You're listening to Around the House, sponsored by Romac Lumber. Our special guest today is Irene O'Malley. She's the director of Lake Cares Food Pantry, and we're talking about her participation in the Lap Against Hunger at the New Home Building and Remodeling Expo. Now, the New Home Building, and the Lake Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo, will be held Saturday, March the seventh, from eight a.m. to three p.m. And during the event, we there's all kind of things happening. First off, it's free; Do, doesn't cost a dime to attend. Now we're asking if you participate in the Lake uh, the Lap Against Hunger that you would do- donate five dollars towards the to feed the needy. But the expo is totally free. In the expo, you're going to have opportunity to see fifty vendors in the construction industries and their local contractors, subcontractors, suppliers, national vendors, and they're going to have the latest and greatest stuff in, for construction projects. And it's going to be experts that you can ask questions. If that wasn't worth the price of free admission, the next thing you can do is just by walking in the door, if you're 18 and over, older, you can fill out a little slip, just put your name and phone number so we can call you if you win the $1,000 cash. If that's not enough to get you there, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we had him on early, we're going to have University of Florida Gator great Shane Matthews. He's going to be there signing autographs, uh, talking Florida Gator football, Going on, just anything you want to do about Florida Gators, he's there. He's a great guy. You, uh, you'll get to meet one of the great Florida quarterbacks. If that's not enough to get you at the expo, <laughs> we're going to have the Leesburg High School band there, the swing band, and they're great. I tell you, it's just a you know, pull up a chair, sit there, and watch, listen to those kids play. It's a wonderful time. Plus, they're going to be cooking food and providing food at the expo so you can listen to the band, help the band, because this is a big fundraiser for the band also, and they need all the help. You know, money's tight for these kids in schools. 
And if that's not enough, each vendor in the show, they're going to have door prizes, all kinds of special door prizes and giveaways. So, you know, it just sounds like a great event. It's going to be Saturday, March the 7th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the National Guard Armory at 400 Meadow Street in historic downtown Leesburg. Irene, I think I got it all out. I think you did a great job, and it sounds like an amazing event. I know that it was last year. We had a great time last year. And the Star Wars, char- Star Wars characters, they they love people coming up to them to make a picture <laughs> with them. So if you ever wanted a picture with Luke Skywalker or, or any of the other cast, they're there to make pictures, aren't they? Yes, they sure are. Let's let's talk a little bit about the needs, the specific needs of families and stuff at the Lake Cares Food Pantry. What are you seeing these days when families contact you? I know you said you're seeing more seniors than ever, but what are some of the basic needs you're you're really seeing these days, Irene? Well, you know, when when people are limited on their amount of money that they can spend on food, they have a tendency of buying a lot of processed food. Okay. Um, you know, a, a five package by, uh, of ramen noodle soup is, is a dollar. So that would feed five kids for lunch for one buck. But the sodium level is really, really high on it. And so Lake Cares is doing everything that we possibly can to give good, nutritious food to these families as well, too. So we've just managed to get this beautiful walk-in cooler where we are able to store all kinds of fresh produce and fresh fruit there. So we're giving out lettuce, potatoes, onions, tomatoes, bananas, pears, apples, whatever is in season to these families as well too because they can't afford to spend the money on that product. The other thing that we're doing as well too is our clients have the opportunity of selecting a few personal items. So laundry detergent and dish detergent is really expensive and if you're on food stamps, if you can't eat it, you can't buy it. So those are items that they really can't purchase. And uh, Lake Cares also makes sure that our clients have that opportunity. And then lastly, the mo- one of the ones that really touches my heart is the seniors and disabled, they, um, they will feed their pets before they feed themselves. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, they really will. So we make sure that we always have dog food and cat food available for our clients too. Let's talk a little bit. You know, we of course we want everyone watching and listening today. Please make plans to take that one lap against hunger and make a five dollar donation on Saturday, March the seventh. It really is important to this community, and very important to those who are struggling to make ends meet. But what can people do before the lap? In other words, uh, can will you accept donations from? regular citizens or groups and and how do you accept donations irene and and then do you prefer cash donations or can some people bring bags of food i will take all of the donations and and one of the things that uh, that's so great about lake cares is we're community supported Mm -hmm. okay we don't have a major organization or or federal or state government or that that's uh, that's supporting us. We are supported by the people of Lake County, and the people of Lake County are awesome because last year we gave out over three hundred thousand pounds of food. Okay, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food coming into the building and then leaving the building as well too, and a lot of it is just from donations. I I, I have to tell one great story. We have got a Friday angel. Mm -hmm. I don't know who this person is, but every Friday morning, really early in the morning, they leave three or four bags of food outside our door. And they must know that I'm getting there early. I'm trying to meet that Friday angel, but I've gotten there at 7 o'clock in the morning and the food's already there. So it's, it's just amazing the way that people are just so generous. You know, if you're taking advantage of a buy one, get one free, make it buy one, give one. Buy one, give one. Yeah. And, and I was going to talk about that. When I took a tour of Lake Cares, you had retired senior citizens in there clipping coupons. And I understand that you encourage people who do coupon or who can coupon, if you can get buy one, get one's free or free offers, please go ahead and buy it and bring it to the food bank. Absolutely. 
you know, you're, you're relying a lot on your couponers, aren't you? Yeah, we do. Yeah, my famous uh, coupon clipping committee there. They're amazing. And uh, and the stores are, are really wonderful, at letting us take advantage of using those coupons as well, too. We don't go in and swipe the shelves clean. We always place our orders with the store in advance, and they order specially for us. Um, so so we do depend on that a lot. And the great thing is, is that any coupons that we don't use, we um, donate that to AMVETS because veterans can use the coupon six months after the expiration date. Now, what's that again? Yeah, that's right. I didn't know that. That's right. At AMVETS, they collect coupons there. And if you are a veteran and you use the PX, you can use those coupons for six months after the expiration date. And you mentioned this earlier, Irene, There, the need is so great with many people, but uh, the donations all go right towards the cause. There's not a big hierarchy. There's not... It's pretty simple, isn't it? It's very simple. And actually, um, we have just come up with our numbers for the year, and uh, 96 cents of every dollar goes back towards the client. We have a very low overhead. We were very blessed to have the building donated to us that we're in. And uh, and I've got 140 active volunteers, so it makes it really easy. And you're never too old to volunteer, are you? I have one volunteer who's 92 years old. She takes a bus to the pantry every Thursday. And you mentioned earlier something that's real important. Uh, food is very important, but uh, hygiene products and, and, and soaps and waters. Well, I mean, if you're a family with children and, and it's a choice between buying soap and shampoo and all that, there's a, there's a lot of things for, that, that you need along those lines, don't you? Absolutely, um, we give out uh, we we give out uh, razors and shaving cream as well too. If somebody's if a gentleman's going on a job interview and he doesn't have that type of product to to shave up and make himself you know presentable, it it all has an effect. It it all starts wearing down on uh, on the 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 building of of that person you know that that gentleman all of a sudden doesn't have that confidence level anymore so anything that we can do to help them get out there get a job feel good about themselves that's the first step and all it takes is one crisp five dollar bill to to make a difference that's right for now once again for five dollars that so on saturday march the 7th from eight to three you can come out there uh, you're going to have raffles. You're going to have giveaways and goodies and a lot of excitement. But for $5, you'll get to take a quarter-mile lap around the track. You'll get a little wristband saying that you took a lap against hunger. That's right. And I guess you're buying a $5 wristband, but wear it proudly. It's a, it's a late cares wristband. But what will that $5 once again buy to someone who's needing, who's needing a, a meal on the table? Well, for that twenty, uh, that uh, five dollars, we we can get twenty seven pounds of food, and uh, and be able to help our clients and and uh, work towards that that goal of fifty thousand pounds. And Irene, if someone wants to help, either by registering their civic group, become a sponsor, commit to volunteering, bring some food, make a donation, whatever they can do. Where is your office located again, and what's your phone number? Okay. We are located at 2001 West Old Highway 441 in Mount Dora. It's the corner of Old 441 and Morningside Drive, big beige two-story building. It's just a little bit past the Dairy Queen. And our telephone number there is 352-383-0100, and our website is lakecares.org. And it's Lake Cares Food Pantry. Food pantry. Food, food pantry. And it's very important to note that the uh, uh, Lap Against Hunger is Saturday, March the 7th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Fountain Park. And Fountain Park is next to the uh, National Guard Armory in Leesburg at 400 uh, Meadow Street. And uh, it's a quarter mile walk. It's a beautiful park. It's me all kind of booths sitting around there. And for five dollars, you can do. Uh, we'll buy twenty-seven pounds of groceries for someone in need. And if you want to donate more, and you can sponsor, we hope to see civic groups participate. It's going to really be a uh, wonderful event, and it's needed so much right now by Lake Cares, isn't it? It certainly is. 
And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you to join us for the 2015 Lake and Sumter New Home Building and Remodeling Expo. And that's going to be at the Leesburg National Guard Army from 8 to 3. It's going to be over 50 vendors there. And we're going to have a $1,000 door prize for someone that day, plus 50 other door prizes. As you saw earlier in the show, Shane Matthews is going to be there talking Florida football. And uh, more importantly, you know, you're going to have the Leesburg High School band and all the swing band, and they're going to be selling food. It's going to be a great community event, and uh, it's all absolutely free, and that's the nice thing about it, isn't it, Irene? It sure is. It's a great family fun day event. Um, so, so you know, Dad can, Dad and Mom can even go inside and to, and and go to your expo there and 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 bring the kids along, and then after that, do the lap against hunger, do a walk around the park there, you know, get to meet those Star Wars characters, get to see the little horses. Um, I, we we have some fun games that are planned. We're gonna have a toilet paper toss. What's the toilet paper <laughs> toss? <laughs> Oh well, you have to be there to see it. But yes, we do have uh, we we have a, a a toilet there, and we have to throw a toilet paper in the. Well, I know last. And you get a prize. And I know last year, all the volunteers at Lake Cares had a wonderful time at the event. Yeah. And uh, you know the the wonderful work you guys are doing at Lake Cares is just absolutely amazing, and um, we're looking for events. So once again. Please join us Saturday, March 7th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the Lap Against Hunger, benefiting Lake Cares. And uh, for $5, you can buy 27 pounds worth of food, and our goal is 50,000 pounds of food. That's Irene cool. O'Malley, thank you for being with us today, but more importantly, thank you for all the good work that you and Lake Cares do. Thank you for having me, Don. It's my pleasure. Until next week, we'll see you around the house.